Confusion reigns over the function and purpose of the so-called ambulance scooters launched in the Eastern Cape last month. Now, in a written response to the DA, the health minister said the scooters do not meet the criteria to transport patients uh, as ambulances. But in June, Zwellian Kize said in a media briefing that the scooters could be used to transport patients as ambulances to feed into the wider network of ambulances. Let's take a listen to what the minister initially had to say. We believe that this is a pioneering effort that should be adopted across the country where a lot of other parts of the country are facing the same challenge. <clears throat> those uh, cycles, motorcycles, those scooters, make it easy for someone who has to walk from house to house ensuring the health of the people. But what I found to be quite nice is the innovation about it, that it can in fact be converted into an ambulance that can carry someone who needs additional help to be brought to an area where it's easy to access uh, ambulances. And in addition, it can also be um, you know, used as a, a mobile uh, clinic for one person. Now, in the latest development in this story, in his response to the DA, the minister now says that the scooters cannot be used to transport patients because, quote, they do not meet the specific requirements as provided for in the EMS regulations, such as minimum patient compartment space and equipment requirements. Now, Fabcom Holdings, the company that manufactures the motorbike ambulances, says the motorcycles are the answer to transport villages, uh, villages in far-flung areas where the sick are usually moved in wheelbarrows, we're told, or to deliver medicine. Take a listen. Um, the clinic unit comes with, with a number of kits. It comes with um, a scale, comes with a baby scale, a um, couple of bowls, a stethoscope, needle cutter, a blood pressure um, a, a arm a thing, and a and uh, the thing to inspect the ears and eyes, eyes and up the nose and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is all um, kit that comes with the clinic. You get um, a gazebo with, with sides that close in, so you can have complete privacy if you want to examine patients. Uh, it comes with two chairs. Um, the, the unit also comes with two helmets. It comes with raincoats. Um, and, and it comes with... A uh, little uh, hand basin that comes with trays that, that lie across here. Hand basin so you can wash your hands and everything. There's water on the back. Um, yeah, and so it comes with, with quite a number of, number of uh, items. Now, the company has been manufacturing these motorbike ambulances for over 15 years. In fact, Brian Haramsa, the owner of Fabcom Holdings, joins us now via our Zoom line for more on the story. Brian, thank you for your time this morning. Good morning. Uh, I want to say that 2020 uh, vision in hindsight is always, uh, you know, very, very clear. But having made these motorcycles, these motorbike ambulances for over 15 years, tell me, were these scooters tested on the ground? And were they effective uh, before they were launched as a solution in the wake of COVID-19? Okay, so the, okay, so for, for 15 years now, um, our market's into Africa, okay? So we've got bikes with NGOs all over Africa. There's over 3,000 um, bikes um, out there, uh, different versions. And on the testing side, okay, so the very first thing we did was we sent bikes to Jurotech up in um, Pretoria where they test military vehicles. And we put the bikes on extensive testing there over a two-week period on, on the extreme terrain to see you know, how the bikes would handle, you know, like workout. But this was already in 2003. So we had um, extensive testing done, you know, locally, um, in extreme conditions, okay, sorted all the small little issues out, and then we supplied the bikes into, into Africa. And we've been supplying all over, <clears throat> all over the place. So when you, when you talk about this kind of testing that's uh, taken place, you say since 2003, are we talking about testing in the terrain that we know the Eastern Cape, the rural areas in the Eastern Cape are known for, with elderly people uh, on, the, on those motorbikes in, in the position they would be if they were sick and bedridden with COVID-19? Okay, so, so it's okay. The, the, the units aren't, aren't for COVID-19 specifically, okay? So the, the use of the ambulance version is to move patients from a rural environment, from the homesteads, whenever they live in the rural environment, to the clinic that's the closest to them. Mm. So it's to move, and, and, the, and the biggest seller we've got is the, is the ambulance version, and that's to move pregnant mothers that are in trouble during um, childbirth to try and get them to the clinic. So there's big projects like run out in Malawi and Tanzania, for example, where there's stats given 
on how these bikes um, actually save, um, you know, kids, save lives. So, so the bikes have been, you've been used in rural environments. It's not an extreme off-road um, machine. It's, it's for a rural environment where the people can't get from their homes to the clinic. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no, there's no need for an extreme version of this motorbike. Okay. You need to cover huge areas um, where there are, um, you know, path, the paths and rothens and gravel roads. And these bikes or well, these sidecars are designed for that. So, I mean, Brian, we were actually in the Eastern Cape when the uh, bikes were launched, particularly in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And already then questions were being raised. You know, if you look at it, it's a motorbike. Uh, it, it almost looks like a tuk-tuk. And if you've ever driven in a tuk-tuk, it's incredibly unstable. You don't feel very safe. I, I just can imagine that that is exacerbated if you're feeling very ill, if you are a pregnant woman. And the minister, of course, you know, backtracking on his initial agreement that it just doesn't fit the minimum requirements to transport sick people. What do you say to that? Okay, on, um, on Al Jazeera, on, our, okay, on, on the eRanger website, there's a whole lot of videos done by Al Jazeera and NGOs where they've been used all over the place, where they actually do live, with actually going out with the, with the rider, with, with uh, picking up patients. <clears throat> so, you can, so you can see for yourself on, on you know, live um, feeds with, you know, how the bikes are being used. They are being used all over the place. So... The point is, they have been used all over, all over Africa. We shipped out um, last week, Friday, four bikes to Kenya, four ambulances to Kenya again. I've got an inquiry now for another 68 um, for Nigeria. So the, the point is, they're being used all over Africa. And but, you know, why is South Africa so unique that you know, they can't be used here? Yeah. So, so right now in the rural areas, okay, there's nothing. There's not, a, not an ambulance or anything in the rural areas. Okay? So this is so cheap. It cost eight, so the ambulance version cost 68,000 rand. So you can put an ambulance um, version that can go out from a clinic to someone's house and bring them back to the clinic. The major big ambulances, you know, the big 4x4 type ambulances, then can go from the hospital to the clinic. Hmm. But there's no other alternative right now. So any clinic that's anywhere in a rural environment right now has got no ambulance yeah. at all, nothing. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right in that that gap still now exists now that the minister has backtracked saying that these uh, motorbike ambulances don't meet, meet the minimum requirements. There is yeah, now that's that another gap. story. Yeah. Sorry, that's another story. Okay. In 2014, Aaron Martinsella, he's, he, actually, he actually signed off the whole thing about emergency vehicles and ambulances, okay? Our, our motorbike ambulances, okay, do qualify as an ambulance, okay? It's in there. So the bikes are, uh, ambulances are registered to be on the road in South Africa as an ambulance, okay? So an ambulance could be an aircraft, it could be a helicopter, it could be a sh a, a, whatever, including, a, a, so it's the, it's the adapt, you know, like adapting a vehicle or modifying a vehicle, which could be a, a, a bucky into an ambulance, it could be taking a, um, a panel van into an ambulance, or converting a motorcycle into a sidecar ambulance. Mm. It's exactly the same thing, okay? So, so, the, so the specifications of what should be inside there, they can you know, decide what they want inside there. You can put anything into this thing, even if you want to put a, a radio or a, you know, anything you could you could do it on this on a motorcycle yeah but the minister now saying that actually if he if he looks at the ems regulations they don't meet the minimum requirements particularly as it uh, uh, relates to patient compartment space how much space the, the patient actually has to travel in and the equipment requirements what do you say to that well okay so okay so our things are being used all over africa as an ambulance okay so if, so if it can work any if it can work you know in botswana I can work in Mozambique, right next door to us. Okay, even in Swaziland, there's some of them running in Swaziland. Okay, so what is so, so unique about South Africa that we're so special that you can't use them here? So you obviously, you obviously disagree with what the minister has said, now backtracking on what he says about totally, these. Totally, yeah. I can I tell you what the issue really is. Okay, the issue is that the DA, the shadow minister, is fighting with the MEC in the Eastern Cape. The DA wants to fight, okay? And by chance, we got into the crossfire of this whole fight by the bikes being launched and here's, okay, so this is an important thing, okay. I haven't supplied a single motorcycle to this tender. We, were, we won the attend, okay, we, we were awarded the letter confirmation that we actually won the contract. I don't have an order number. I've received no money. I've supplied nothing. Okay, so right now, I've got 85 motorbikes in stock now to be converted to whatever, okay. So whoever comes first with an order number to me will get it. So Nigeria comes to me with an order for 60, 60 or 68 units. They've got, the, they've got the bikes from me. I then have to import new bikes, you know, into the country to modify them into sidecars. Okay. So, Brian, you're saying that this potentially is a missed opportunity. As we've been discussing, 
the fact that that gap still remains now in getting people life-saving treatment in a hospital, that gap now still, still exists. Completely. And I promise you, okay, so in 2013, there was this front page article in the, in the Daily Dispatch, okay, where there's a, an old man in a wheelbarrow being pushed. The dispatch people drove past, saw this going down, they stopped, and they asked, well, what's going on? They said, uh, the, old, the guy can't get to the, to the clinic. So they, had him, they were pushing him in the wheelbarrow, and his daughter had ropes in the front of the wheelbarrow helping to pull him to the clinic. So right now, if you're in a rural environment, okay, you've got no chance. So it's easy for us, you know, you know, you know with data and, you know, with growth around us and, and support to kind of comment about this, this pro the product, okay? But in the rural environments, the oats have got nothing. I mean, there's nothing. They don't have data. We were in Moiplas last week doing a demo on three different units with the Department of Health, just a demo. We weren't launching anything. We're just showing them our solo motorbike and leave a clinic with medication, they can go into a village and they can then give people the medication for three months. So nobody has to come to the clinic anymore. Okay, they can go out there door to door on a motorbike in extreme conditions. Then our clinic version can go into a village and they can put up the clinic and the people can come to the clinic and get the medication. Brian, okay, so, so just, all just, you're doing is you're moving it to the rural environment. Yeah, That's so just, just as we round off our interview, the contract, uh, so to speak, has now been scrapped. As you say, you've not received any money. Uh, you won the tender, you got the letter to say you've been awarded the tender, but no money's uh, exchanged hands, and you have not delivered any of these motorbikes. Is there still an option here? Is there still a discussion taking place? You know, if these bikes don't meet minimum EMS requirements, is there still an option for them to be used at least to deliver life-saving chronic medication? Well, the bikes, okay, so, so, so we, we make these things for everybody. So whoever wants them can order them. So, we, you know, so, yeah, so, so if they want to use them in South Africa, they, yeah. We have, right. we're, the only, we're the only people in the world supplying this into Africa at the moment. Yeah. And we have for the last 15 years. And by the way, there's a whole stamp series that done by, by, by health um, for, for rural health care. And our stamps, you know, there, there's a picture of our motorbike on this thing. So it's been recognized in health care for since 2006. So I don't know, know why all of a sudden it's, now, you know, it's not viable now. Yeah. It's always been viable. And, and there's been a number of projects in South Africa where they've actually been rolled out. Brian Haram, sir, thanks very much for your time this morning on the AM report. Brian uh, is the owner of Fabcom. That's the company uh, that initially won the tender to provide these motorcycle ambulances in the Eastern Cape. We know that the Minister of Health, Dr. Zuelin Kiza, has now backtracked. He says that the uh, motorcycle ambulances do not in fact meet the basic requirements uh, in terms of the EMS regulations. Very important issue that I think uh, residents and South Africans in general were very concerned about was the issue around that 10 million rand. Harams are telling us no money has been exchanged, none of those bikes have been delivered. I think that's an ongoing discussion we'll have here on the channel.